Poetry for Kids. Would it be interesting or entertaining to read random words thrown on a page? Probably not. Reading is enjoyable when we put words together in a certain way, and it creates a story. Great stories can produce wonderful images in our minds. There are many different ways to write a story. One of those ways is called poetry, which is the writing of poems. Poems are made up of different parts. The title of a poem is the name of the poem. The theme of the poem lets the readers know what the poem is about. A single line in a poem is called a verse, and a group of lines in a poem, separated by a space, is called a stanza. Poetry is a type of artistic writing that tries to stir a reader's emotions and imagination. A poet is someone who writes poetry. A poet carefully chooses certain words and arranges them in a way that gives a poem rhythm and meaning. There are many different styles of poetry. Often, poems rhyme, but they don't have to. Here's an example of a poem. That rhymes that you might be familiar with. I sat there with Sally. We sat there, we too, and I said, "How I wish we had something to do. Too wet to go out, and too cold to play ball. So we sat in the house. We did nothing at all. Did you recognize that poem? It is from the famous book." The Cat in the Hat by Dr. Seuss. Often in poems, the last word of every other line rhymes. For example, in this poem, the words "to" and "do" and "ball" and "all" rhyme. Remember that the rhyming words in a poem are usually found at the end of a sentence, but the pattern of the words that rhyme is not always the same. Let's look at these two poems. I have a cute cat, whose name is Pat. He sleeps on the mat, where I just sat. All the last words in that poem rhyme. Now let's look at this poem. I have a cute cat. I like her a lot. She sleeps on my mat. Her name is Dot. This time, every other sentence rhymed. Did you notice the rhythm of those two poems? This time, let's try clapping as we recite the first poem. I have a cute cat whose name is Pat. He sleeps on the mat where I just sat. The beat of this poem is steady, just like the beat in music. Many poems also have a beat or rhythm. Sometimes, instead of a poem that rhymes, a poet will use something called repetition. Repetition is used to emphasize an idea or to create rhythm. Notice the first part of each sentence in this poem by Shel Silverstein, called "Tell Me." Tell me I'm clever. Tell me I'm kind. Tell me I'm talented. Tell me I'm cute. Tell me I'm sensitive. Graceful and wise, tell me I'm perfect, but tell me the truth. The words "tell me" are repeated throughout this poem, which also creates its rhythm. Acrostic poems are another type of poetry. Look at this poem and see what you notice. Students learning, children playing, hoping to make the world a better place. Our teachers help us. Our friends work with us. Lessons for life are learned each day. Did anything stand out to you? Here's a hint. Look at the first letter in each sentence. Do you see it now? How about if we highlight each of those letters? You're right. The first letter of each sentence spells out the word school. Which is also what the poem is about, isn't that cool? That's just one example of some of the neat things you can do with poetry. The mood of a poem 
lets us know how a poet wants us to feel. Different words can make us feel different emotions. Let's look at this poem called A Dragon's Lament by Jack Prilutsky. I'm tired of being a dragon, ferocious and brimming with flame, the cause of unspeakable terror when anyone mentions my name. I'm bored with my bad reputation for being a miserable brute and being routinely expected to brazenly pillage and loot. I wish that I weren't repulsive, despicable, ruthless, and fierce, with talons designed to dismember and fangs finely fashioned to pierce. I've lost my desire for doing the deeds any dragon should do. But since I can't alter my nature, I guess I'll just terrify you. What are some of the strong descriptive words that the writer used to help you know that this dragon was fierce? Do the words terrifying, repulsive, claws that dismember, fangs that pierce, and brimming with flame create the image of a terrible, frightening dragon in your mind? But the mood of the poem feels a bit different than that, doesn't it? Do you almost feel bad for the dragon? Even though dragons are typically scary, this poet has made us think differently about this dragon and maybe even feel sorry for him. A poem can also create word pictures. Word pictures are images that your mind creates from the stories and words that you read. There are no illustrations in the poem about the dragon. But could you picture the dragon in your mind? If you read a story about a race car, can you see that car as it speeds around a track? Or what about a story about a princess and a castle? Can you see her as she sits on her throne? That's your imagination at work. It's also what makes a story more interesting. Even though there might not be pictures on a page, your imagination does the job of creating them for you. Those words and images can also create a mood or help us feel certain emotions. Now, let's look at another poem by Jack Prolutsky called Carpenter, Carpenter. Carpenter, Carpenter, build us a house. A sweet little house for a mouse and a spouse. A mouse and a spouse and a family too. We know that you can, and we hope that you do. Build it of brick so it's cozy and warm. To keep us from harm in a cold winter storm. As soon as you finish, we'll pay you with cheese. Carpenter, carpenter, build our house, please. Can you picture the cozy house for the mice? The words sweet, little, cozy and warm are words that make us imagine a safe, warm little place. When you write a poem, think about how you want your reader to feel. Do you want them to understand that someone is in a scary or dangerous situation? Or do you want them to feel safe and calm? Different words can help your readers feel different emotions. Poems can have different patterns or rhythms. They can be silly or serious. They can rhyme or not. In just a few lines, a poem can often tell an entire story. Now that you know a little about poetry, how about you try writing a poem of your own? Be sure to subscribe.